I love this guitar. It has a chambered body, so it's kind of light. I always uh, played strats, but I wanted them, I guess, maybe to sound more like a Les Paul somehow. And uh, so I ended up just getting a Les Paul that did it. Hey, this is Greg Prado with Ultimate Guitar. And for my first ever interview for Ultimate Guitar, I have Roger Stevens from Blind Melon and also Town and Stevens. Rogers, how are you? I'm pretty good, Greg. How you doing? It's great to good, see you. Good. Pretty good. Yep, we've definitely chatted quite a bit over the years, and here we are again. Yeah, yeah. yeah yes. we, we even chatted just for no reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and from what I understand, besides Blind Melon, you have a new project called Town and Stevens, which you also sing lead uh, vocals on. If you want to talk a little bit about that project, that would be good to start with. Right. Well, um, this is a record that I did with uh, Nathan Town, who uh, plays bass in Blind Melon, mm -hmm. and also is a sort of multi-instrumentalist uh, classical <laughs> guitar player. He, he, he's, he's far beyond me in terms of, um, you know, those skills. But, and, and so he's, he's been, it's been a great collaboration, but I, um, I never sang before. So uh, I had to learn how to do that. <laughs> and uh, I, I never really, uh, I've never engineered or produced a record on my own before. So, I had to figure that out, and so I did it pretty much in this room, um, you know, bought gear and whatever, and that's, you know, learned how to use it on this record, and it kind of surprised me, you know, I mean, I, I didn't really think, I, I, if you would have told me that I would have pulled it off three years ago, I would have been skeptical. I see some guitars, you want to show us some of your guitars that you use? Yeah, um, well, that's the number one baby right there, the Les Paul. Can you hold up and show us? Yeah, yeah, this is a, um, and, and this is sort of recent, you know, this is a 2008 Les Paul classic that Gibson so very generously gave me. I mean, I, it, it's like, it's a, um, you know, it's it's not like a, a it's not a custom shop, Gibson. Okay. Noted, by the way. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I love this guitar. It has a chambered body, so it's kind of light. You know, I, I always uh, played strats, you know, from the beginning of Blind Melon and even like back in high school. Mm -hmm. But I wanted them, I guess, maybe to sound more like a Les Paul somehow. And uh, so I ended up just getting a Les Paul that did it. And, and, and you know, I, I, love, I love the way this thing plays. I mean, I, I, I find this to be a very inspiring guitar. I mean, I went to the factory in um, uh, Memphis, I believe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I walked, you know, down a line. I was like, I just kind of picked a few of these up and they were painted the same and they looked the same. And I was like, A, B, A, B. Is right. it light? You know, <laughs> you know how, does it, how does it resonate? And just, I just did that really quickly. Right. I feel very fortunate to have yeah. <laughs> it. But, um, so then I have, um, you know, mostly I played Strats. That, that's a, um, I have two of these, uh, I'll show you here. I have two of these, uh, uh, like, uh, Fender vintage reissues. Okay. And both of these are from the early eighties. And, and I think, you know, people who, who freak out about this stuff will tell you that, you know, Fender started really nailing it, uh, around, um, uh, the early eighties, uh, going back and sort of re, you know, uh, associating themselves with the very first you know, really great Fender Strats and, and Tellys and all that. And so like this, the, you know, both of these are 57 reissues. Um, I've had a 62 reissue, which is what I played on the No Rain song in it recording and also on tour until Shannon smashed it and threw it out into the crowd at Reading. I was actually going to ask if you could explain <laughs> to us what happened to the guitar that you played in the No Rain video. It was, it, I mean, it's a, it's a really... I guess from his perspective, I can kind of understand. <laughs> but um, from my perspective, it was a devastating loss because what happened was I was, we, we were playing in front of that, you know, sort of big crowd. And, um, you know, the, the jack, the input jack that you plug the cable into uh, started <laughs> cutting in and out. And mm -hmm. so I just kind of took it, you know, what you can do with a strat is you just kind of toss it over there. <laughs> And, um, 
And so, uh, you know, over by the end of the day, I had another one. I had a backup, right? And, and so I, I picked that up and I was playing it. And somehow Shannon took that as a signal that that guitar was done. And before I could even like move towards him, he had picked it up, run to the center of the stage with it, smashed it and threw it out into the crowd. <laughs> and so I, uh, <laughs> the last I ever saw of it, it was like disappearing over the top. Like it looked like, you know, when people were crowd surfing and then they would eventually sort of get to the edge and they were gone. Right. Devoured, but it looked like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> right. Um, but I played that for the whole first tour and on the entire first record. Mm -hmm. So. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have any other guitars you want to show us? I saw that there was a nice acoustic guitar behind you. Yeah. Um, this is a, um, this is my number one acoustic baby. Uh, this is a, a Martin CEO 7. Oh. And I just love this guitar. It's a small sort of parlor size guitar it's not a big you know dread or whatever. I mean, um you know it, it's really i don't know much about martin guitars or whatever i just heard they were great i never <laughs> you know, i never could whatever spent that much money on one but um i ended up getting this one that through martin and uh, i love it i mean i wrote every song on the town stevens record on this mm -hmm. guitar and it's all over that record it just sounds like, you know, it's it's super punchy, you know. It's like So I have that one and I mean, a recent find is this which is a, um, this is a 1967 Gibson something or another. <laughs> and somebody will know uh, other than me. Wait, it's actually in there, but I can't see it. Um, yeah, something, yeah, right. I know what this is, but it's like an LG1 or a LG2 as I understand it, except it's the 12 string version. It's really odd. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it's like you know it's that a great sounding it has this weird sort of uh, trapeze bridge I don't know what you call these I'm not an expert okay but um, and this is all you know wooden bridge here right and I'd never I've never owned a 12 string mm -hmm. so the very next recording that I release is going to have this all over it I'm pretty sure nice. <laughs> yeah I've been loving this thing. Right. I mean, I'll put it here. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got a bunch of other guitars over there, but, you know, some of them are embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, because before you just right. talked about Shannon, and it seems like over the past 10 or 15 years, there is like all new interest in Shannon with the two books, A Devil on One Shoulder, and also the book just titled Shannon. Also, Danny uh, Clinch's uh, All I Can Say film. Why do you think there continues to be so much interest in Shannon? I mean, look, honestly, I don't have a ton of insight into that, I guess. I'm kind of, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't see a lot of things, but I did see those books and I did see the film and um, all of which I was so, I don't know, made me feel all the feels all over again because um, uh, Shannon was a, uh, I don't know, he was just a real raw sort of open personal, you know, beautiful soul you know i think i think that came out in the music and that sort of thing is timeless it's it, it, it's it's um impervious to trends will always be i mean their recordings now i mean I, I don't know like you know about i don't know if we reach you know like that kind of greatness or whatever but you can think of songs you know that just are never going to go away mm -hmm. and and no rain is probably always going to be around i mean right. I, I don't think i mean the, the rest of our recordings, I don't know, because they weren't like popular hits on that level. Yeah. It's hard for me to say, you know, because I'll be the guy who uh, hears the one song that somebody had a hit with in the 1960s, and I'll think, I bet they have a bunch of other good songs, <laughs> and then I'll go find them out. You know? 
And you just mentioned the song No Rain. Would you be able to uh, show us a little bit of No Rain on the guitar, maybe the riff and maybe the solo, if you don't mind? Why, I just so happen to always be ready to do that, Greg. Oh, very nice. <laughs> I played it. I played it recently at a um, at a show. Okay. And it was freaking hard, you know? Um, I just, uh, you know, it's been a while. So, um, but like, the you know, the, the main... If I do the main uh, sort of part, I, I, I've got a dimmer on this light here. Can you hear that hum? A little bit. It's like a... That's fine. See, <laughs> don't tell. What? Well, hey, look, don't tell Gibson. But I, you know, I think these are P nineties. I, I, I've replaced. I replace everything on these guitars. <laughs> I replace the bridge. Is a Callahan bridge. Okay. <laughs> And I put them on every single guitar, Fender, Gibson, like, yeah. I, I mean, it's one of the few things that I've ever used, and I, I really noticed a difference. I was like, wow, that made this thing ring like a Steinway. And then Lady Fraylin, I put Lady Fraylin pickups in all of my guitars because I just, I feel like he, he's, he's, he's sitting there winding them by hand. So what I ended up with is sort of a half-assed custom shop, Les Paul here. I find a good piece of wood, and then I make it my own. Nice. So, um, I mean, and you know, I didn't play this song, record this song on a, uh, on a Les Paul. So it's a little, you know, beefier sounding, but, um, but, but that's not beefy. That sucks. <laughs> um, e. so that's sort of the main riff. And then you're kind of going through the verse. The way I think about the guitar always in every situation is, and music in general in, in terms of theory is, is I just find the major scale that works. And then I just base everything I do in a song off of that. It's just less stuff to remember. Music theory is really confusing for me. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm playing in what I think, what I think is an E major scale. I've come to find out reading magazines like Ultimate Guitar and whatever that it's a mode that I don't really... I'm not really aware that I'm in that mode. Right. I think of it as like, I'm I'm trying to make, you know, the sound of music or something, or the, the theme from Sesame Street. And, <laughs> you know, they just kind of sound like that. So, um, but, and so the solo is like this. Playing a little slower so people can like figure it out. last part right that's not exactly what i do but i kind of mess that up every time but <laughs> uh the point being is that in that last part actually i don't think i'm in the e major scale anymore but i don't know what scale i'm in okay on this quad <laughs> something like that right now now that solo when you recorded that was that totally off the cuff or did you have some things mapped out with that mapped out with that I song? I had worked out pretty. I mean, I probably played the song maybe five times, like as a band. When we cut that tune, like it was really because that song always sort of existed as a demo that Brad had, which was you know he had the sort of. Like, yeah. <laughs> You know, it's in there. Right. And then um, uh, he had that sort of, you know, initial, like, he had a, he had that that line. And, he, and so um, I just took the solo off of that. Right. And uh, it was, um, it was, uh, uh, yeah, I, I probably winged, I probably did wing up that at that point, though, now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. Just the solo part. I think... By that stage, I would have kind of known the song and like the chords, and I would have been moving through those lines and the voices. You know, 
and I would always try to play a little harmony in there if I could, you know, against the chord. But right. and then uh, and I, there's a delay on it, as you can hear. Yes, I don't know. It's like. Yep, I hear that. And yeah. the one that I used, just for the record, I'll tell you, I mean, this is exactly what I played on that. I used the yellow strat, a Fender uh, Champ, just like this. A 19, whatever, it's like a 65 Fender Champ. I love these. These are the ones, like, really, really good recording apps. Mm -hmm. You turn them all the way up, and they just do all kinds of weird shit. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then, uh, I had an MXR delay pedal. It was like a green box, and people will know because they still look for them. They're like a vintage, cool effect. You know, they have like a... It's a Philadelphia Eagles green, Greg. Huh. That's what it is. Okay. And uh, it's an MXR analog delay, one of the big box ones from the 70s. That's what I used. And uh, I don't know, just cranked it through that, the Strat, and it's perfect. Yeah, because speaking of gear, I wanted to ask you a personal guitar question I've always wanted to ask you. What is the effect you used on the Blind Melon song Swallow to get that kind of delay? That is a delay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no good ear. No, but all it is, it's like, a, it's it's actually, um, it's this one. It's this. It's a, uh, a, a an Ibanez something or another analog delay. And, you know, I think guitar players know this trick is, you know, if you've been full, if you ever mess with one of these for a while, you might accidentally do it the first time and regret yeah. it. But uh, you can turn the, the delay um, volume all the way up and turn the feedback repeats, meaning how many times it goes. Bah, 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 bah. You can turn that up. You, know, you can make that go once. Bah, bah. You can make it go twice. Bah, bah, bah. And uh, so... Uh, you just get the tempo right with the song, and then you hit the guitar once, but you set it to infinity. And what would you say are the most fun songs to play live with Blind Melon on guitar? Um, I'll tell you, you know, we've been doing that song at live shows. <laughs> we never did it before. I think maybe we played it once. Swallowed you're talking Sh about, right? Yeah, right. with Shannon. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, we, we did it when we were recording it, but... Um, I don't know if we ever did it live, but uh, we've done it with Travis, and 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 he sings it great, and and it just you know I don't know it's it's really fun. It's like a you know, it, all for 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 five minutes with a heavy metal band that I wanted to be, Greg, <laughs> that no one would let me be. <laughs> right, because yeah, you mentioned Blind Melon. I'm just curious, what is the current status of Blind Melon? Are you guys going to be playing live again soon, or what's the what's the story? You know, the pandemic sort of threw us everybody for a loop. You know as you know, but we can't blame that anymore. So I don't really know. Um, we're, we're kind of in those discussions now, seeing where everybody's head's at. I mean, honestly, I'm doing, I'm, I'm making another record now and and, and uh, I, I really don't know. I'll always play shows if <laughs> Fly Mill wants to play shows. I, you know, but for me, my number one focus is, uh, is recording new songs. That's the only reason I do this. Right. Really. I mean, I, li I like playing live shows as, as like sort of a, a fringe benefit of that process, but there's no reason for me to do this unless I'm making something new. But that that's all I care about. Are there plans to play live with a uh, town and Stevens? Yes, there are. Okay. <laughs> yeah. People should check out the uh, site. I would imagine to uh, see any kind of updates, right? Well, I mean, yeah, we have the album, uh, on, I mean, every now and then we'll mention something on the blind melon social media sites or whatever, but I'm new to all that. I just like we just started a, a social media site on like Instagram, Facebook, and I never had one before. So, I mean, I, I had one for a long time or a long time ago, for, like just personally with, uh, uh, you know, with uh, for you know, with friends. <laughs> but um, now I have friends, <laughs> and um, I, I never been on there before, <laughs> and uh, so I'm trying to figure all that out. Right. Do okay. you know me? I'm not a Luddite. I just am I'm preoccupied with other stuff. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of which, uh, people may not know, you have a very interesting profession besides music, right? If you want to talk a little bit about that. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I went to law school. I do, I, I do, I, I, I'm, I've been, you know, I've been a lawyer, you know, for 10 years. Um, and um, it's just like a whole other part of my brain. But, you know, I made this record... I made this record in this room like um, 
throughout the pandemic, you know, and I, I was working long hours like that in mm -hmm. the day, you know, the professional sets. And then I was in here at night in solitude. So, um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm definitely possessed with <laughs> something delusions of grandeur or something. I don't right. know, but I, I, um, and I want to, I just want to make records, you know, and I, I feel like I didn't get to make, right. you know, the records that I wanted to make when I set out <laughs> on this path. So I'm just trying to fix that. What type of uh, law is it? Cause I know there's different types of law. Uh, what type of law do you practice? Well, I'm, I'm like, uh, I'm working in the technology sector now, Greg. Okay. You know, just, um, I'm in house. I'm not doing, I, I was doing federal court litigation, um, mm -hmm. but, uh, basically. And, um, yeah, it's not, you know, I'm, I'm kind of, it's like a whole other side of my head. <laughs> I can turn around and talk to you from the other side, but how does the songwriting compare or differ with blind melon and also town and Stevens? I mean, it's entirely different. It's all me and Nate. <laughs> um, you know, I, you know, and I'm writing all of the most, I mean, I'm writing a lot of the vocals on this record and the lyrics and Nate wrote, um, you know, he had, he had the vocals and, uh, the, the music for, for, he had three songs basically. And then we sort of co-wrote a, um, a, lo a really long song <laughs> that's at the end of the record. And that was one of the ones that was, I was like, man, this is something. We had a really good collaboration on that. And uh, and I'll say this, you're, if, if this is Ultimate Guitar Magazine, you're interviewing the wrong dude in town in Stevens. Because, I mean, you've seen Nate play. <laughs> I mean, he's, I've been around a lot of great guitar players and I've been around a lot of great musicians, but he's, you know, he, he's, um, he's as good as I've ever seen. Um, I don't know. He, he's, he blows me away all the time. Mm -hmm. If anybody <laughs> looks him up, they'll see. Like, don't you know? This record, he does amazing things. And um, but but you know, just him with the guitar, he will absolutely stun you. Okay. And, and um, I don't know. I mean, Randy Lopez playing drums, and I'm always you know really uh, love playing with Randy, and I just love his 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 drumming. <laughs> so. He's he's a songwriter, so he plays the drums like he's a songwriter, you know, with melody. And I understand that you enjoy the Ultimate Guitar app. Is that true? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, um, I was telling you this before is that I I learned to sing with that app, um, and I always I I have to I get the big huge iPad right, and I have it on there, and. Um, I basically, I don't look at tablature, you know, they, they, you, every song that you can look up on here, uh, they have, you know, they'll have it, a lot of them will have multiple versions and, and users can like submit their like corrections. And I always look through them if there's a song that I want to learn, but like, I don't, I just look at the, the, uh, the cowboy chords and the, and the, um, and the, uh, and the lyrics. And I, I sing songs from memory. Like I, like I have. I have 500 songs saved up uh, from the beginning of like, I, you know, I can play band on the run from beginning to end on acoustic guitar now because mm -hmm. of this app. I can play like, I have, you know, bell bottom blues. I, I just go like, and I, you know, I don't do like the exact recording, you know, mm -hmm. but like a lot, you know, a lot of the, uh, you know, if you've heard a song enough, you can just, you can just, uh, you know, just kind of wing it. I don't get them perfect, but like, you know, that that one. So like, you know, they give you the chords and um, the lyrics, and then I just I, I sat on my porch uh, and drove my neighbors crazy. Just, <laughs> I mean, I'm not kidding for. Throughout the pandemic, I sat out there every day for like two, three hours, and I just like, I just sang, and I, I recorded myself with a, with a, um, you know, like phone or something, just to like, because you know you kind of want to listen back to see if you're actually nailing it like you think you are. It, and um, and I was able to like, you know, sort of dial my voice in, and then I found a teacher here who like told me I was doing everything wrong. As it turns out, she was right. 
So, um, I, uh, I learned how to like get my, you know, it's, it's a lot of it is physicality, you know, and, um, I know what I want it to sound like, and I know where the pitch should be and all that stuff. You just got to find it in your own body, you know, mm-hmm. but this app every single day, still I'm out there on the porch or like in this room. And, um, uh, my list of songs is insane. Like I, I saved the playlist, right? So I have like, this is my main playlist. Like if I look on this page, I have a bunch of weird shit. Like, you know, I have Sister Golden Hair by America next to Slip Sliding Away by Paul Simon. <laughs> Southern Cross by Crosby, Stills, and Nash. You know, I just go through and I I can do Stairway to Heaven from beginning to end and sing it now. Yeah. Not just that opening. Remember when you were a kid, everybody could do, play the beginning of Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> Right. But, um, you know, I don't know. I, I figured out, like, uh, I never learned other people's songs before, <laughs> ever. I mean, I, we wrote songs in Blind Melon, and, like, I just figured it out, and I didn't really know, and that's why they sound so weird, you know. But um, I, I went through the can on this app. I mean, I got everything from, like, uh, like all of Redheaded Stranger, you know, all of, um, you know, and a lot of the user interpretations are really good. The stuff that people submit, um, um, you know, they're they're you know obviously like high level players out there that use it too. So I, I don't know. I don't know that much about it. I just had it. I've I bought this app like years ago, and I've just been using it, and using it, and I built it up like, and I know the I do like one thing with it. They have a bunch of lessons and stuff that I don't, you know. I, I just look at the songs, but they they, they have. You know, all of, it has a tuner if you want that mm-hmm. and stuff. But I don't, you know, I just look at the songs in my my playlist. All right, and then just the last question I have: Are there any other projects or any other future things you have on the horizon? Um, well, not really, because I don't have time to start any more projects, <laughs> Greg. To be honest, um, I'm I'm I, I'm helping some friends out with a mix right now. I'm like trying to, you know. I've got the studio. I've, I've got a console in here now that, you know, this phone is sitting on top of and I got real gear. So trying to learn how to use it a little better in terms of recording. Um, I got a piano. I got a drum kit. So right now, you know, Nate and I are recording a record. So mm-hmm. we're, we're going to try to release that before the end of the year, though. Great. So my name is Greg Prado with Ultimate Guitar, and I was interviewing Roger Stevens from Blind Melon. Thank you for watching.